Good morning, beautiful friends. All right, so today I'm actually just going to do a review of um, the seven chakras that we've already gone through in detail. Um, I know I had mentioned that we'll talk about some of the other um, chakras as well. However, there's actually a lot more information in there than I thought. So I'm going to save that as a separate video for next week. So right now we're just going to go over um, all of the chakras, kind of what they do, what their importance and significance is, um, <clears throat> and uh, like how Reiki can help overcome any of those um, blocks or issues that you may be having. So to start out, just like I do on most of the lives, I'm going to get some sage burning and we're just going to do a little bit of breathing and then we will get started. So if there is anybody here that joins in that did the full moon ritual last night, I would love to hear about your experience. Uh, for me, it was very calming. It was very emotional. I was able to release a lot of things. Um, and I think what I'll do in the future moving forward is actually, um, I'm going to work on start recording some, um, I'm going to work on some guided meditation recordings for you guys. So I'm really excited for that. I'll put together a little package for you guys. Um, I'm going to do a meditation for each of the full moons and then we'll do some new moon meditation rituals in there too. Um, hopefully I can have that ready for you guys in the next month. And if not, then the next full moon, we'll just do a guided meditation together over Zoom uh, for a small fee. And we'll we'll get you taken care of that way. Because I know with the ritual last night, there was a lot to remember and a lot to go through. Um, so I think if I guided those meditations for you, it might be a little bit easier. So we'll try that for sure. All right. So just taking a nice big deep breath. As always, just burning some sage for y'all. Clearing the space, clearing the energy here. Whew, feels good. All right. So chakra system in review. So the chakra system that we learned about was the seven chakras. That's where we have the root, the sacral, the solar, the heart, throat, third eye, and crown chakra. So I'm going to like quickly go over each of those chakras, um, what they do, how they affect you and what body, um, and then how Reiki can help you with that. So the root chakra, um, the key issues there is sexuality, lust, and obsession. The color is red. It's located at the base of the spine. Um, it's considered the first chakra, which is the one, whoop, there, push it this way, right there at the bottom, the color red. Um, the inner aspect of it is grounding spiritual energies. And the physical, so in the physical body, um, it refers to your sexuality. In the mental body, it is your stability. In the emotional body, it's the sensuality. And the spiritual body, it's about security. Um, so if you have any issues with feeling safe and secure, if you have any past childhood traumas that still need to be healed, um, if there is a like a bit of a lackluster kind of going in your life. Like you're just really not having desire. You're not having those kinds of needs met. Um, those kinds of needs aren't really feeling like a need to you. Um, Reiki can help fill that energy back up and kind of bring you back into that space when it is out of, um, when it is out of alignment, that's when we can start becoming obsessed with things or people. Um, we can lust after people that are not necessarily good for us. Um, the root holds a lot of our conditioning. So like what we were taught growing up, uh, whether that be from parents or outside sources, um, this is kind of where our programming has begun because the root chakra is the first chakra to be activated when you were born. And it's it goes through the first um, seven year cycle of your life. So from birth until seven years old is when the root chakra is developing. Um, so if there are any um, childhood traumas, any sort of any sort of issues from when you were growing up, then there's a lot of energy that can get stored into that chakra. That's not necessarily good energy. That's not going to allow the chakra to work properly. 
Um, so this is like where the patterns in were developed in childhood. Um, so if you had a parent that smoked, like that impression gets put into you. Um, it's where unreleased emotions and traumas can be stored um, that can also create addictive behavior. So that's kind of like on the line of obsession as well, right? So if there are addictive habits that you have, whether that's eating, shopping, smoking, drugs, any of those things, um, there's likely a connection in some sort of conditioning that happened in your first seven years um, that kind of left that impression in your body. So Reiki can help to clear out those energies out of the shop chakra and fill it up with good vital energy. Um, there's always um, emotional things that you need to deal with to keep it clear and functioning properly, um, but Reiki can at least start the process there. Um, so the crystals that you can use to calm this chakra is emerald and sapphire. To balance is the carnelian. I don't have emerald or sapphire, but I can definitely show you carnelian. So carnelian is a beautiful um, orange red stone and it's got like these flecks of red in it. This is what the carnelian stone looks like. And that's for your root chakra. So next is the sacral. So that's your orange chakra. That's the one that's going to reside basically um, where your reproductive organs are for women um, kind of sits where the uterus is and for the men if you're not sure where that is it's just below the belly button sorry i'm just trying to find my chakra chart here so i can show you a little bit better where is that uh, i don't see it um anyway so the sacral chakra, the key issues are relationships, um, violence, and addictions. The color is orange. The inner aspect of it is your feelings and emotions. So the physical body um, reaction to the sacral chakra is reproduction. So if you are having trouble conceiving a child and there's no real reason medically why you um, cannot have a child, uh, there might be something going on in the chakra itself that isn't allowing um, that to happen for you. Um, on the mental body, it's all about your creativity. So that's where your creativity lies. Um, so if your cre creativity is really great and it's flowing, then you know that that chakra is in pretty good shape um, but if you're kind of stuck and not finding that creative outlet then there could be um, an issue in that chakra as well sorry I know I'm blinking my eye funny it just feels like there's something in it sorry <laughs> um, and then in the emotional body this is where your joy kind of uh, sits and then in the spiritual body, it's where your enthusiasm and kind of like your zest for life kind of comes into play. So if any of those things are not feeling so good or you're having trouble finding joy, you're having trouble finding the creativity, um, there's just no enthusiasm for life, um, it's very possible that that chakra might just need to be filled up with some Reiki energy to get it flowing and working a little bit better. Um, stress to this chakra causes us to put up defenses to avoid our true feelings because we don't really want to talk about it all the times. Hi, Amber. Um, especially when it's concerning somebody of the opposite sex or like in a romantic kind of relationship setting. I don't like putting up that division between opposite sex because yes, even though um, we are very different from the opposite sex, it can still happen in a woman and woman relationship. It can still happen in a male male relationship. It doesn't necessarily have to be um, the opposite sex because if we are attracted to someone of the same sex, then it can still happen. It can still happen for us to want to avoid our true feelings about that. So we want to be able to, um, we want to be able to get that shocker in really good alignment and get it really flowing well so that we can have really good, successful relationships, um, and not bring in because when it's not functioning properly sometimes we can become very very angry which can create some violence for us um, whether it just be violence in our in our head or actual outward violence so we want to be careful of that um, it can create difficulties with reproduction and the libido it's also where our cr creativity lies being able to find the creative outlet can help balance the chakra um, so if you are noticing some issues with that but you're not quite ready for a reiki treatment yet um, then just trying to find a creative outlet can really really help to get some energy back into that chakra because that's what inspires that chakra is creativity and joy um, so that's something that you can do to naturally start a process of healing that chakra um, the solar plexus is the next one. So this is our yellow one here. So I'll try to turn you there. 
It's our yellow one here. And that one sits just above the belly button, kind of where your diaphragm kind of is. It's about two finger widths above, no, sorry, three finger widths above the, the um, belly button. Um, and the key issues with this one is um, power, fear, anxiety, and introversion. So as I said, the color is yellow. The inner aspect of this chakra is opinion and personal power. Um, so the physical body, this can affect your digestion, your mental body, this can um, affect your power, your self-empowerment, um, your emotional body is your expansiveness, and then in the spiritual body is growth. Um, so if you're having any trouble in those areas, and again, there's a possibility that there's something going on with the chakra that needs assistance. Um, and also another really good thing to know about the solar plexus chakra is that it's kind of where the energy distribution center is. So when we get into like the other chakras, I'll probably talk about this a little bit more so you have a better idea. But essentially we can pick up earth energy from the bottoms of our feet that travel up through our body and then we have universal conscious energy that comes in through the crown so what's happening is we have energies coming in through the top and the bottom and the solar plexus is kind of um, the distribution center of all of that energy so just picture it like coming in from the top in from the bottom reaching at that solar plexus and that solar plexus if it's not if the chakra, also known as the wheel, is not spinning and not having good color in it, um, then it's not able to distribute the energy through the chakras the way that it needs to. So the solar plexus can end up overactive or it can end up deficient depending on what it's actually doing with the energy. So if anything that I've said made you feel like your root and your sacral chakra are out of balance, um, but you really don't have anything that would... Um, that would be creating those blocks like if there isn't an issue um, with childhood or there isn't an issue with creativity and you're not really sure why these chakras are dim it could simply be just be because the solar plexus isn't distributing the energy the way that it needs to be and that could be where the actual issue is um so it can very easily affect the other chakras if it's not um if it's not taken care of um, sorry, just to go back to the sacral because I did forget to talk about the crystals for the sacral. So crystals for the sacral is the yellow topaz, orange calcite, um, fire opal or carnelian again. Um, I do have some orange calcite. Hold on one sec. So this is the orange calcite. So it actually looks like it could be plastic or made out of wax, but it is... <laughs> It's a real stone. That's the orange calcite there. Um, and then to calm is emerald. And then to balance is moonstone or aquamarine. All right. And then for the solar plexus chakra, the crystals that you'll need to calm it is emerald and sapphire. And then to balance is citrine. I should have had my crystals ready for you guys. Hold on. <laughs> so... Going through all of this, I've noticed that the, um, the emerald and the sapphire, they're both really, really good for calming any of the chakras. Um, just because it's just got such a pure earth energy, the green of the emerald can really um, call in the energy of the earth. And then the sapphire with the blue can really call in um, like the spiritual energies, the universal consciousness energy, because it really does correlate well with Archangel Michael, who is the blue guy, and he's all about truth um, and universal consciousness. So that's why those two stones can um, can calm the chakras. And that's why you'll hear me say it for almost every chakra. Um, but then for um, balancing the solar plexus is citrine. So citrine can be anywhere between like a pale to a dark honey like yellow. Um, can even have like some pieces of white in it as well. And it's it's just gorgeous. It it just looks like it's hardened candy, like hardened maple candy. And I just want to eat it, but I can't. Um, but it's just, it's, and it's got such a powerful energy. Citrine is like a fire stone. So that another beautiful thing about citrine is that you do not need to cleanse or clear these stones because it is a fire stone. It can clear itself. It can cleanse itself. And the beautiful thing about this one is that it actually cannot absorb negative energies like other crystals can. 
pen. So that's why it doesn't need to be cleansed because it doesn't absorb that. Um, oh, sorry. I just got distracted by a rainbow in the crystal. It, it's beautiful. Sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, it actually just repels negative energy. So if there is like energy coming at you that's negative, this stone is actually just going to take it and send it back out into the universe. It's going to send it back to the receiver um, because it's not yours to take on. So the citrine is really good for protecting you that way. So next we have the heart chakra. So that's going to be the green guy right here. This is your heart chakra. And it's literally like exactly where your heart would kind of be, but it's like center chest kind of in between the breasts or between the nipples, however you want to look at it if you're a male or female. The key issues with the heart chakra is passion, tenderness, inner child issues, and rejection. The color can be green. It's mostly known as green, but it can also um, vibrate with the color of pink, red, and white. The inner aspect of it is unconditional love and compassion. So the physical body, it can affect circulation. So if you're having poor circulation in your body, there could be something going on in your heart chakra, especially if everything else medically has been determined like there's no issues. Uh, for the mental body, it's, it's where passion lives. And in the spiritual body, it's, um, it's about your devotion. So the heart chakra is really, it's important for it to be open because um, that's, we can become really, really unhappy people if the heart chakra is not balanced properly. Um, it can also send us into a little bit of depression. Um, I know I have personally had like heartache and it's not like the kind of heartache that you would think, like it's not... Um, it's not a metaphorical heartache. It's like an actual ache in my heart and everything medically had been taken away. Like there, there was no reason for me to feel like there was actually pain on my heart. But the reason I was feeling pain on my heart is just because I wasn't being compassionate enough to myself and the people around me. And that was creating a block in that chakra. So that's where the pain was coming from. It was my body's way of letting me know that something wasn't right there. And after I went for the EKG, I went for all of the testing that they would do on your heart. They did determine that there is a little issue with my heart, just that it can really um, get itself out of balance with its heartbeat but otherwise no real reason for the ache that I was feeling so as I had begun doing um meditations especially like chakra meditations for the heart it really helps to take some of that pain away and now anytime I have that ache that sits on my chest I know that there's something going on with my heart chakra so crystals to activate um the heart chakra is peridot. It's a very, very light green stone and it's absolutely gorgeous. I don't have one to show you, unfortunately. Um, to calm is, I don't know if I have that one. Just give me one second. So to calm, we have pink topaz, pink or lavender kunzite, or Ronandite, which is this one here. It's got like a beautiful pink and then it's also meshed in with some black there too. That's that stone. And then to balance it is watermelon tourmaline. The reason they call it watermelon tourmaline is that it actually looks like a watermelon when it's cut. Um, so it has green all the way around it and then it has pink in the middle. So like when they actually cut the pieces of crystal, it looks like a piece of watermelon. They're super cool. Um, and then the rose quartz as well is really great for balancing. And it also just has such a loving energy. So if you are having like some self-compassion issues, this is a really good one to be carrying around. Um, because it just fills you with this beautiful loving energy um and it's just i don't know i just love rose quartz it's one of my favorites so up next we have the throat chakra so we're moving on up so that would be the blue guy right here that symbolizes your throat chakra the key issues of that one is um, self-expression communication and will the color is um, turquoise the inner aspect of this chakra is your expression so in the physical body, it can affect your communication. So if you're not communicating well with people, you're not being listened, um, or they're not hearing things the way that you are trying to say them, then there could be something going on with the throat chakra. Um, 
in the mental body, it's fluent thought. So if you're finding yourself like just jumping all over the place with your thoughts and you're having a hard time keeping track of where you were, um, if you're making a speech and you're just, you cannot keep with where you're supposed to be on the page, um, there could be something going on with the chakra. Uh, the emotional body is the is your independence. Um, so if you're finding yourself in a codependency situation, again, there could be something going on with the throat chakra. And I'm even going to push it a little further and say that there's probably something going on between the heart and the throat chakra um, if we're having a codependency issue. And then in the spiritual body, this can affect your security. So what it is that makes you feel safe, especially if you're not able to express yourself fully in the way that you're truly feeling, um, it can really lead you to feel unsafe because it makes you feel like it's not safe for you to say your truth. It's not safe for you to express yourself um, in the way that you actually want to. So it can create a bit of a disconnect there between um, the throat and the heart for sure. So crystals to activate are going to be your blue topaz or yellow topaz um, to calm. One second. Sorry. All right. And then to calm, we've got emerald, sapphire and quartz. So just a nice piece of clear quartz. It doesn't have to be a point. It can just be a rounded piece, polished piece, rough, whatever it is, just as long as it's clear quartz. And then to balance, um, I don't have like a full piece of just turquoise, but in my chakra pendant here, I've got the turquoise there. And that's to balance. And then gem silica and chrysocolla. I don't have either of those to show you, but they're just really beautiful, um, like blue, like aqua blue colors. They kind of remind you of like those really, really deep aquas from beautiful like Caribbean places, water. So beautiful. All right. So now we have the third eye chakra. This is going to be harder for me to get up here, but that's your third eye there. So the color that it's associated with is indigo um, or like deep blue. So the key issues with the third eye chakra is balancing the higher and lower selves um, because we know that there's the highest self and we know that there's shadow self, right? There's always two sides of the same coin. It's kind of how life works. And we have to be able to um, accept and embrace the shadow side of us um, because it's really the shadows that allow the light to come in. It's it's the darkness that allows the light to come in. So it's really important to, um, to accept all those parts of you, the higher and the lower self. And then it can also affect trusting, trusting our own inner guidance. Um, so I already talked about the color. Um, the inner aspect of this one is your intuition. So this is really where your intuition lies. This is where you're going to get the information that you need um, to make the decisions that you're trying to make. And a lot of the times we get mixed up between intuition and ego. But whenever we have something kind of come across in our mind, if it is an answer that we're looking for and something does happen to come up and you're not sure if that's intuition or ego, then you just need to ask yourself, like, is this true? Is it fair? Is it real? Um, and if you're really unsure, then there's a good chance that it's ego because intuition is definite. There is no questioning about it. Um, so the emotional body, the way that it's going to affect that is the clarity. Um, so again, you are searching for an answer to a question, but it's just not coming to you. The clarity is not coming to you. Um, that's just because there's something going on in the third eye chakra that's either allowing you to not believe your intuition um, or to just simply not follow it. And then in the spiritual body, um, meditation. So meditation is really important for ourselves on so many levels for so many reasons. Um, even if it's just quieting the mind, it's so good for that. And that's going to allow the clarity and the intuition to come in when we're able to do that. But if you are one of those people that have difficulties with meditation, like you're just unable to lay there, you're unable to quiet the mind, um, you're having any sort of issues with that, then there's a good chance that there's something going on in the third eye chakra that's not allowing you um, to get into that space so the crystals to activate um, the third eye chakra is diamonds <laughs> um, but for a um, 
for something that's a little bit more pocketbook friendly, you can also look at the Herkimer diamond. So I did look up the Herkimer diamond after our third eye shocker chat a couple of weeks ago, and it is significantly cheaper than actual diamonds. Um, it is just a higher level of quartz is really what the Herkimer diamond is because it's just so clear. So if you look at this quartz, like, yeah, this quartz is a little dinged up. It's not perfectly clear. Um, and this is just the way that clear quartz is. But the Herkimer diamond is like the purest form of the clear quartz. Um, so that's why they gave it that. And it also comes faceted kind of like a diamond. Um, but what it does and the reason why like quartz and Herkimer diamond is so powerful is because it harbors all of the colors um, in the chakra system and the rainbow. Um, so it can it can heal on that level because it can associate with each of the chakras. Um, to calm this chakra, so if there is too much energy going on it, um, emerald and sapphire is going to help there. And then to balance it, we need lapis lazuli. Where is my lapis? Lapis, where are you? Oh, you're right here in this bowl. So this is a rough cut. Is this lapis? Nope, sorry, that's soul delight. Hold on. So your lapis lazuli is just this beautiful deep blue. You're going to find like specks of white in it as well. And then you should be able to find um, some gold flecks, some gold streaking. I don't know how well it's going to show up here. But I've got some like gold pockets in here as well. And then lastly, the crown chakra, what we talked about last week. Um, so I'll just go over this quickly because we just did this last week. So this should be nice and fresh in your mind um, if you watch the other one. So the key issues are your inner wisdom and then death of the physical body. So those are the key issues for your chakra. Um, so again, if we're not following inner wisdom, we're not listening to that intuition, then it can become, um, it can become a real problem for us. It can create a real disconnect. Um, and then death of the physical body. The reason why the crown chakra is concerned about that is just because that's where the spirit is going to leave the body um, once we have passed on into the spirit realm again. Um, so that's what's going to happen. Like the crown chakra, once our spirits leave the body, the crown chakra will close down. Um, the color is violet. Oh, I forgot to show you up here. So that top one there, that's your crown chakra. That's what that um, is associated with. Um, so violet, the inner aspect of that is the release of karma. So in your physical body, um, this is meditation. So I know that it kind of correlates with the third eye, but that's because they're just so connected. They're like the two, they're definitely like the closest chakras. So it can definitely affect one or the other. If, it, if it's going on in one, then chances are it's going to be going on in the other. But the physical body in the crown chakra needs meditation to help it stay balanced. Um, the mental body is about universal consciousness. So this is where you're getting your downloads of universal consciousness. Um, it's hard to explain exactly what that is, but that's just where you're picking up the intuition. You're picking up the energies. Um, if you are tapped in spiritually, like a lot of the information, I'm sure you've heard people say that they get downloads. Um, or even if you didn't, some people claim that they get downloads from the universe and that information is coming into the crown. And then it's also spreading out into the third eye so that you're getting an idea so that you can translate what that consciousness is that's coming in through the crown into the third eye. Um, the emotional body, it's going to affect your beingness. So like your the whole picture of beingness. So that's you being part, like being one with the universe, not being part of it. You are, you are the universe. Um, it is within you that beingness and being able also to be still and to listen and to let guidance come through. And then in the spiritual body, so it's unit unity through transcendental consciousness. So pretty much what I just said, just with some bigger, fancier words. <laughs> All right. So then the crystals that we need to, I put everything up on my windowsill to charge in the full moon last night. So that's why I don't have anything with me right now. Um, but for activation, we have celestite or blue sapphire. I do have celestite, but I'm not going to get up again. Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, to calm is going to be the chariot or the sugar light. I don't have that. 
And then to balance, we have um, clear quartz or amethyst. My amethyst is currently underneath my Reiki table right now because I just had a session end before I popped on here. Um, so I'm not going to go get that. <laughs> um, I'm sure that most people know what amethyst looks like anyway. Uh, so the reason that I've talked about this and we've gone through the whole seven chakras and like kind of like a lesson series is because I want you to understand how much the chakras can affect our physical body, our mental body, our spiritual body, um, our mental, I think I said mental, I don't know, but physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual bodies. The chakras can really affect all of those things. So if you are having, um, if you're having pain, if you're having like physical issues, there's something going on, but the doctors are not able to figure out what is actually going on for you or why you're having this discomfort, um, then it's very possible that it's on an energetic level. We are energetic beings. Everything is made of energy. It has been scientifically proven that everything is energy. We are energy. So therefore we need to take care of our energy and understand that sometimes we pick up energies that aren't even ours. So if we're having like a super crazy day and things aren't feeling good and you're getting really upset about what's going on, just take a minute to breathe, take a minute to meditate, listen to your inner guidance to see what it is that's going on for you. And if you're just simply not getting any inner guidance, then Reiki can really help you with that. Reiki can get the chakra system moving, um, can fill it up with energy and get those chakras, also known as wheels, spinning and moving and distributing energy the way that it needs to. And what it's going to do is it's going to make you feel more energetic. It's going to make you feel um, more positive. It's going to help you sort through maybe some traumas that you've had that you've had it's just a very gentle healing guidance um that can really help you get over a lot of that stuff i mean it's not going to happen in one session it's going to take more than one it might even take like a bit of a regiment and there's nothing wrong with that if you need to do eight consecutive sessions so that you can get everything in alignment the way that it needs to be and then start doing like weekly maintenance to take care of the chakras you can totally do that um but then also what you need to keep in mind that sometimes outside sources can really affect those chakras or even our internal emotions can affect those chakras if we allow ourselves to get inside of anger um then that can create an issue in your sacral or your root chakra um if we really allow um if we really allow ego to take over, then that's going to close down the intuition that you can receive from your third eye and your crown. Um, if you're not speaking your truth, you're not talking about your authentic feelings, the way that you are really feeling about situations, that can create a disconnect in your heart, your throat, and your third eye. Like it can just affect so many different things. And it's just so good for the soul to have Reiki in, as part of your life. I highly encourage everybody to at least go out go out and get their reiki one um because it teaches you how to reiki yourself and how to help yourself and it's just such a gentle yet so powerful tool that can really help you with this whole self-healing thing that's been going on like you're seeing it everywhere you're seeing people talk about manifestation you want to manifest we need to get those thoughts and feelings in alignment and doing Reiki can help you with that. Um, you want to, you want to find that creative outlet or maybe that thing that you can make a little bit of money on, um, while also getting a creative outlet going, get some energy into that sacral chakra and see what kind of ideas come to mind. But it's just so important that every part of it be balanced and be in good working order so that everything can work the way that it needs to. It is a system. They call it a system for a reason because if one isn't functioning properly, then others aren't functioning properly. There's things that are happening that are creating the other ones to stop functioning properly and it's kind of a situation like where you can't have one without the other because they all kind of work itself into each other so like the root chakra if there's any childhood traumas then that one's going to be dim the next 
the next chakra up, your sacral is not going to be able to get as much energy into it because all the energy that you're pulling up in through in through your feet from the earth energy is not going to get distributed into the sacral because the root is taking it all, but it's not using it the way that it needs to be. And the same like if there's something going on with this with the sacral, it's going to block the energy from the solar that's trying to get down. And then it's not going to allow the extra energy that's coming in through the earth in through the root to distribute up. Then therefore, that's going to create an overactive root that's going to start creating security issues for you. Um, if the solar plexus is dim, that's your distribution center, then all your other chakras are going to start getting out of whack because it doesn't know where to put the energy properly. So like, as you can see, like they are all connected. Um, um, it's so important for them to be in balance and for them to be functioning well, just so that you can be happy and so that you can love yourself and accept yourself exactly as you are. Um, because without that self-acceptance, then we just cannot be, <laughs> we just cannot be everything for everybody. We have to be for ourselves first. So if you're a mama or you're a dad, like you need to make sure that you, that you're, <laughs> Uh, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual bodies are all working the best way that they can so that you can provide for those kids because you cannot provide for anybody if your cup is not full first. Like you cannot, um, you cannot have a healthy, successful relationship if, if these things are going on all the time. And that's going to create a disconnect in your sacral if there's relationship, excuse me, relationship is issues and etc. So I just really want to like drive the point home on how helpful Reiki can really be um, and just how life changing it can be. And with me, when you hire me for Reiki, it's not simply a treatment. I'm not simply just going in there and clearing out the chakras and filling them up and then sealing you off so that those chakras are working in good function for at least three days. Um, to, of course, depending on what kind of situations you're coming up against after. I mean, you could come in for a Reiki session and then the chakras be out of alignment again by the end of the day, depending on the energies that you're surrounded by. Um, but with me, you don't get just that. You also get a bit of a, a spiritual coaching and I tell you exactly what's going on in the chakras so that you can make a decision on what it is that you can do to help that further. Um, and then I can give you lots of tips and suggestions and maybe even book recommendations that can help you depending on what chakras it is that are out of alignment for you. So I would love to be that person for you. I would love to provide some Reiki treatments um, now that you understand just how important they are and how they work and how they work together. Um, hopefully you can see how important it is and that it should be part of, I'm not going to say should, but that it could be part of your um your self-healing journey and it's just so gentle um it works better than than talk therapy simply because um because it's also working on an energetic level too like it's great to get the things off your chest that you want to get off of your chest um but on an energetic level we got to make sure that all of those things are clear and that the aura is vibrant um and i can even put like some protection around you so that you're not absorbing the negative energies there's a lot of things we can do to help so i would absolutely love you can reach out to me you can send me a message privately um you can leave me a comment under this post whatever it is that you want to do to reach out i'm always here willing to help if you have any questions questions any specific questions about what reiki is or like your situation and i can maybe try to tap in to, to let you know like what chakra is kind of out of balance what you can do um to help yourself a little bit until you can afford a reiki treatment or until you have your session whatever the situation is um just reach out to me because i would love to help so in saying that, I do also want to remind you guys that I do have a contest up. We do have nine new followers since this contest went up. So thank you so much. Um, or sorry, nine new likes. And I think it's eight. 
eight or nine new followers. Um, so really, really exciting. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, but the contest is coming to an end soon. So make sure you are sharing this page with your friends, invite them to come like the page. Let me know if they join and you can get entered into the contest. Um, and just as a little reminder, you're getting this the winner is going to get this chakra pendant. It's going to be filled with Reiki energy and um, it'll help a healing process just by wearing this too. So get the word out there. Uh, make sure that I can get connected to the people that need me and doing so um, just really helps me and helps them. So it's a beautiful experience all around. So I do appreciate you sharing and getting the word out there. Um, let's try to reach 150. That's what I would love to see. So we got 30 more to go. Let's see if we can do it by the end of the week. If not, that's okay too. Um, we'll still do the draw for somebody who's going to win this beautiful thing. And it does come with an info, info card as well, just so you know, so that you can um, look up all of the stones that are in your chakra pendant as well. All right. Thank you so much for joining. Um, so next week I will get into the additional chakras um, because there's also a 12 chakra system that is believed as well. I was taught um, by a Reiki master that's very much about the traditional Reiki, which doesn't mean that there's anything wrong or bad about that. It's just there's been new things discovered since um, and there's definitely things that are up for debate. And I personally do see how there could be more than just seven. So I want to get into that with you guys, but maybe next week. Just I knew that this review was going to take a little while and I didn't really realize how much was entailed with the other chakras. Um, so we'll get into the, all of the other ones next week. So I hope you enjoyed this review of the seven chakra system and that you enjoyed the lessons that we had during this. Um, hopefully it opened up your mind a little bit to what else is out there, especially when it comes to energy and energy work. Um, I would love to work with you. Just reach out and let me know. All right. Take care, everybody. Have a great uh, Tuesday and we will chat soon. Bye.